Well, I did go about 20 miles away, and um, it was an adult entertainment club, and walked in and walked out. You know, the energy right now is feeling very, very foul. I was very suspicious about that euphoric yipping and hollering. And let me just say, someone that I know... Um, man, I'm really upset right now. I wish I could just tell you what's going on. But I can't. So, understand that our loved ones are in danger. And I try to warn you. I try to warn all of you. And someone I know dealt with basically a death threat. Someone that... There are people out there that are in situations where they're dealing with really unstable people from the streets. And right now I just can't because of just these things that have happened to me. Being here did kind of wake me up and spark me back to life because of the pain that I'm in. But remaining here is killing me. The other day I was walking I stepped in concrete when I got off the street when cars were coming at me. I just sat there pissed. And I go to the gas station. The black guy. The, the other lady that used to work there. She used to be nice and greet me. This person or female is like glaring at me like. There are spiritual black people. And there is an aspect of black people. That is straight being demonically possessed. Not just black people. But this is what I dealt with. Now, I will also see black people that look absolutely miserable, that I know are not evil. Just somehow, I just know intuitively, I don't get that feeling from them. They're old, they're poor, they're walking down the street, and they're sick, and they have no health insurance. And they're dying slowly. And they live very, very hard lives here. Okay, and, and here, it, it needs its own book. Okay, its own book. Just like Portland, just like Colorado, and these are... These are different stories and essays that I can write about these places that I've been. And anyone living in New York can write about New York and L.A. and where you're from and where you've lived. But yeah, there are certain times in America when the energy changes and it is foul. On one level, it might be sexual, it might be energizing, but it's also energizing to those entities. And some people of a low soul voltage, they get that, that murderous vibe to them. And this is reflected in the news. Okay. Oh, we'll just we'll just glance this glance at this briefly. Now, say if it was if I was in Portland, Oregon. I don't know about now. But I never had a great time going to strip clubs. They always had a dirty, dark, dark, dark vibe to them. But some were darker than others. And aspects of Portland, it was, it was I don't want to say less dark. Maybe I should say more sexy. That would be still dark, but maybe sexy or dark. Whereas the here is just foul. You know, the sexuality of a female, it's not just, you know, private parts and, and being naked. It, it is like the, the feminine aspect and so if someone has their femininity removed by a dark environment that's basically raping their mind, raping their body, raping their energy, they're not going to be good looking in those environments. They're not going to be uh, desirable. Now, I just would like someone to talk to. And it's pretty clear that my audience doesn't want to talk to me. So I thought that I would go somewhere online and maybe find someone who might want to chat who's here. Website says $10 for a one-time payment. It was recommended by perplexity.ai because I went through six others and basically I came up with a new understanding 
And I'm not describing myself, so you understand that. I'm describing low-voltage men that have no self-control or spirituality, how they're going to react to what I'm about to tell you. Now, the first thing is nobody necessarily is entitled to sex. Nobody. However, we are sexual beings. And to say that there should be systems in place to ban or stop or interfere with people having sex. Now, when you have that going on, that right there, we have a problem and we need to have a conversation. What we have is a transformation where just several decades ago, people would meet naturally at bars, churches, coffee shops, and at one place, Powell's Books. Didn't happen to me myself, but that would be like the reading generation. By the way, have you seen Heat with Robert De Niro? Do you remember that scene? Let's just go ahead and bring it up. Heat is a good movie. And I am a hopeless romantic that would love to treat a woman nice who has never really had a true relationship. Only, you know, because a woman never liked me like that. That was of high quality that I liked. Um, and so I don't have a lot of memories of Valentine's Day. I don't have a lot of memory. It's just memories of, of sex and even going to sex clubs and some prostitutes in the earlier, earlier days. And all that had to do with just living a life in which I didn't grow up in the same area and no women got a chance to know me. At one point, there was a neighbor girl that I knew when I was in Aurora, and then she moved away, and I missed her, and then I moved around a lot. So I never got a chance to just, you know. So by the time I became an adult in Portland, and I'm 18, 19, and I'm getting off the drugs, and I'm working, I'm already thrust into this brave new world, and 9-11 happens. And men like me are marginalized in a specific way, and it's even harder to date. Anyway, at one point I met a person named E that I just called, and I fell in love with her, and she broke my heart. She immediately dropped down and gave me sexual pleasure. And when I fell for her, she made me feel small and worthless for wanting to be with her. And she said things like, none of my friends like are like you. That want to be like, yeah, none of my, none of your friends. Like she made me feel small and bad. And um, the pain and the trauma that she put me through, I never got over. And I went through meeting other people. Then I hung out with someone named 528 Hertz because she doesn't want to use her real name on YouTube and she likes to comment here and there and observe me from a distance yet she broke my heart too would drink alcohol take drugs maybe other drugs that she was not forthright about like she came across as a nymphomaniac like uh, uh, Satanist pretending to be Christian totally rageful totally pissed off horny as hell so fucking sad man that it couldn't be love. Like, this is hell. This is hell, basically. Um, so, I guess I don't want to get into all that, but basically, I ended up on Craigslist for a number of years. And then there was that period of 2010 where I had the survival store where there was about, like, eight of them. So, and then a lot of really negative things happening after that, and then eventually leaving Portland, moving to the Lone Star State, and then that experience, are known is hard to talk about but lived with a woman there. We didn't get along. She invited a guy over. He tried to force himself on her. I told him not to rape her. I was angry that they put me in that situation that I had to do that. And I left the next day. I've been in few romantic situations after that. Then somebody visited me on the land that broke my heart. Then I went to Manassa afterwards and met a, a crazy person who looked like she was going to throw up after we had sex when she asked me what my race was. That was the last time there was interest in me. It was 2017. Now, an incel will be someone, I think, that would try to just get laid any way they can and can't. I'm not doing that. I don't, I'm not doing just... But I am willing... I am willing to let synchronicity happen is what I'm saying. And it's not going to happen on YouTube and Twitter and Facebook and the, and the conspiracy movement. Um, although in Portland, it happened a little bit in Portland. Where I would just put up ads and just say what my name was. And I want a spiritual conscious person to hang out with. We just want to talk about the real nature of things. And the reality is we, we would hook up, have a few beers. A few hours later, about half the time. Okay. And then other people, they would respond. But they really had no interest 
in either conspiracy truths or 9-11 or spirituality or off-grid or sword flares or anything. They just respond to my physical pick and the words and the energy. And then when I remember saying to one Asian girl, I can't be attracted to a woman that doesn't care about other people, she was ending the date right away because she knew she was one of those types that was completely selfish and evil. So I've gone through plenty of dates, plenty of one night stands, plenty of this and that during the Craigslist days. And then Craigslist went away and then I went into the home free lifestyle for a while and then did the off grid thing. You know, and then for a while there, people sought me out a few. And then when I had land, there was a few females that were analyzing me, seeing if I was worth anything when I had land, when I had something, when I had something. And it's amazing when you lose something, even if you have to leave it because you feel unsafe, women will lose respect for you if they perceive you to be a fearful man. They're more into the person with the guns, even if they're not a content creator, with the money, uh, even if they're abusive and an alcoholic, kind of like the way Crystal likes Ryan McPherson. I don't know if he's abusive, but he is an alcoholic. And yet she made sure that my friendship was ended with him. Get this, because I criticized his alcoholism. What's so crazy about this is Ryan asked me not to tell Crystal about him getting drunk and driving me on the Rio Grande Ranchos when it was frozen, when I lived out there in the yurt. Now that's crazy, bro. That's a crazy drunk. So he's hiding the fact that he's that drunk from his wife. But then when I call out his drunkard behavior, when I'm off grid and talking about how I needed men free of that arconic energy, because when he drank, he was mean to me. So I talked about it. And because I talked about a bully who came over drunk abusing me, basically Dizzy Dustin, who sent me to Costa County, showed up in the comments one day saying, yeah, he lives outside Durango. And see, that type of action is the only thing people need to zone down where you are and then kill you or destroy your life. All I wanted was to be left alone in nature. And now everything's been destroyed. So a woman in Pagosa said she wanted a conscious man one day in 2018. And I showed up right away saying, I'm your man. And then we had synchronicity because, of, you know, I saw her at the hospital where I had to get a blood test. And then she's like, oh, you're that off-grid man. And she said it like off-grid man, like I was Bear Gorillas, which I thought was weird because she's living in Pagosa, but she's not even living alongside nature. She's living in some sort of like urban lifestyle in Bogosa. A lot of them city folk in Bogosa. They're in Bogosa, but they're not in nature at all, mentally. They're still in the grid while in Bogosa. They're fucked. They've got that tourist thing going on. They've got, I've got the money to live in Bogosa, but I'm from Denver, or I'm from this place. Like Denver's just a fucking hellhole. I know one person in Denver, and I don't know really what he's going through. He wants to get off grid. There's other people that are in Denver that are going crazy. I heard the situation is really bad in Denver. So basically, I really felt a strong, strong desire to go to Vegas just to be around the action of people being festive because it is so dark where I, where I am. It is so evil here. And I told you about some of the experiences that I've had recently and I don't want to repeat it now. I don't have any... They're... they're uh. So, the website said it was $10 for one month. It said $2.99 if you commit to a six month. $2.99. But one month, $10. So I'm thinking just $10. That's just like one meal. Maybe I'll meet someone that I can start a meet up with Maybe there's a female out there that really wants a conscious man who doesn't want to just, you know, treat her like that. Maybe I have to go through the dating realms to find someone spiritual. Maybe it's just like that. So I go ahead and agree. And what happens is they take out 40 bucks. And um, they take out 40 bucks. not 10 and so I went to the PayPal and canceled it and I found out that it's a scam website it's not even real so basically it's just 40 bucks but I invested that just trying to like have a conversation with someone because I'm basically hated out of like the thousands of you that'll tune into a YouTube channel and to be honest with you I wasn't expecting like that level of a cold shoulder 